Yo, what's up? It's your boy Currency365. Hope you guys are doing well. Legends never die. They stay in our hearts. Uh, if you want to support us, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also you can come down here and hit the join button uh, under the video uh, or in our channel uh, section. And you can also join our Patreon, patreon.com slash currency365. And uh, we also have Cash App and also PayPal uh, for support if you want to sell some seeds. Peace out. God bless. Enjoy the video and keep the movement going. Legends. Bye. Corporate media like ABC News, MSNBC. Yeah, I still watch them from time to time. But understand, a lot of those people that pay very well, they're not in the trenches like that. Like you or I are people that are boots on the ground. And we see what's really going on, especially those of us that have been censored, that have been affected by the censorship. See, there's a difference, by the way. So keep that in mind, uh, by the way. So one of the things I kind of deviated, why I haven't uh, done videos in a while, like I said earlier, I have been uh, doing a lot of research in my discipline. Uh, it's very important. I wish I had, you know, uh, more help. I would say more so I wish I had an immediate relative or family member that knew about this or understood how detrimental uh, the information is pertaining to sovereignty is to our survival. Because there's a lot of people that are waking up to that. There's a lot of people that are having uh, success with that that are paying off bills I hear getting uh, cars because the these debt collectors and corporations have been stealing from us. And a lot of this stuff is being broken down, but the elites also see that a lot of people are waking up as well. And they're also, the cabal is trying to put uh, a thwart in these things and stop this. Uh, so I was also gonna do a video. I, I think of various topics. It's difficult the way my mind works. Sometimes when I try to come up with topics to discuss before you guys to let you guys know uh, or give you all uh, give you all a heads up as far as what's coming, one of the things I planned on discussing or like a reoccurring video, uh, it's been a while, something related to the New World Order to understand uh, why they hate Trump so bad. I think a lot of people don't understand or why the media or certain elements of the corporate establishment media it's ganged up on Trump, for example, whether you hate him or love him, uh, but just the understanding of the New World Order. I was taught about the New World Order, the one world government, the Illuminati, the ruling class elite. It is very real. This is not something that is a joke. This is not a game. Uh, this is very real. There are people, because there's some people I know out there that say, oh, Dorsey, you're giving them too much power, by the way. But the thing is, you got to understand these people have an enormous amount of wealth. They built generational wealth. Uh, not saying that they achieved it uh, fairly or had, some of them had maybe humble beginnings, but we know that the banking system is very, very corrupt. And that's why I used to tell you guys, a lot of times go check out that movie, uh, Money Masters, Monopoly Men, uh, what else? Uh, that, that documentary, Ring of Power, Empire of the City, these will give you an idea, a basic uh, generalization. Many of you all now are already awake to those movies, those films, but the reason I've always mentioned those as reoccurring documentaries to check out, if you still can find them on YouTube, because some of these films have been censored, but Monopoly Men, Money Masters is a good one, uh, Money Masters is long, so you you know you want to take your time with that one, not no rush. But it's going to be an eye opener, and it's going to explain to you in a concise manner. It's going to give you an idea, and then there's other videos out there. There's modern day videos that you can find that shows you some of those same banking families how they control a lot of stocks and how they manipulate it or use their wealth to control for manipulative purposes and things. So that's what these documentaries will help do, they will help paint a picture for you so you can identify who the real bad guys are. You know, they try to pretend to be the good guys. A lot of times that's why they go in fields as philanthropists, uh, you know, different fields. They're, they're, they initiate their children to go into fields similar 
uh, by the way, but it doesn't mean that they always have the general public's best interest at heart, like the climate change scam. It's important to do a lot of research behind uh, what's going on with climate change, because at the end of the day, they want to uh, charge people for the air that we breathe one day. Not saying anytime soon. It's That's one of, part of their agenda down the road, like the movie Total Recall years ago. For those that are familiar with that, uh, according to their uh, carbon credits, this is tied in with the uh, green movement, a uh, part of the climate change agenda, agenda now, agenda 2030 used to be agenda 21, now agenda 2030. And moving ahead in, in the United Nations sustainable development, they want to remove uh, carbon and things from the atmosphere, things that help us breathe. There's an exchange that we have with the trees, the plants and the atmosphere and turn this into a hellish world. That's why it's not a coincidence why Bill Gates is buying up a lot of farmland. They want to create artificial scarcity. By the way, this is important. I forgot, I meant to go over this with a friend of mine yesterday when we were discussing, uh, when I was telling him about Trump and explaining the reason why uh, the globalists don't like him like Klaus Schwab with the World Economic Forum. Trump basically told him some years ago, I forgot to mention this, he stood up to Klaus Schwab. He skewed America first, you know, by the way. See, Trump is not for nationalism. Nationalism is the sovereignty of your country, your country's independence, your country's freedom. Globalism, understand globalism is where they will take over your country, take over your country's local state and government politicians and implement their policies, have a draconian form of government. Klaus Schwab wants to get, get rid of freedom of speech. They want to create artificial scarcity. Remember, he said he wants people eating bugs by the year 2030 or something. He says, you'll own nothing and be happy. Look at what the corporations are doing, like BlackRock, buying up all these properties, housing. Look at, uh, for those, uh, you know, so I have compassion. I keep up with what's going on for those uh, who need, uh, what do you call, fair housing and things of that sort and uh, wealth inequality. That's not Trump. That's that's Klaus Schwab. That's BlackRock, Larry Fink. You need to pay attention to what they're doing. You know, they make Trump to be the big bad boogeyman, but that isn't the case. You guys need to know who the ruling class elite are, the Illuminati. That's the real Illuminati is the World Economic Forum. You need to look up who they are. You need to research them. Uh, Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, who said, we no longer need humans anymore. Out of his own words. These are not my words, folks. So this is not something I'm making up to say here, say uh, to poo poo. This is out of their own words. Read uh, Klaus Schwab. They have books. In, uh, fourth Industrial Revolution or something, something to that effect. And uh, they have a lot of their meetings in uh, northern Europe or the north, north part of the world. They're based out of Davos, Switzerland. They're, they're the daylight version of the Bilderberg. My friend called it some years ago. He said basically, uh, he said Davos is... Uh, David, that's what that means. But you look up on a map, that's where they're headquartered, based out of Davos, Switzerland. And I hear with this uh, so-called eclipse thing event coming up, was it April the 8th, uh, this coming Monday or something like that, that I hear CERN is going to be firing off the Hydron Collider. And that they're involved in some occultic activity where they have a statue of Shiva, which represents destruction or their their uh, interpretation of Satan or the devil. Uh, they have the statue of Shiva, which it came back to me. I couldn't remember, but I think it's supposed to represent the God of destruction. And they have, uh, and they built CERN over some type of temple years ago. Symbolically, they don't do these things by coincidence. And I hear they're going to be firing up the Hydron Collider and they're going to do something to, uh, to try to invoke uh, spirits of the underworld or inter interdimensional beings into this reality. This is not my words. Uh, look up, check out the SGT report. All right, when I check out Rumble, and they were censored by YouTube, SG SGT report and X22 report, but X XGT report did a report with the Christian uh, Clay Clark. I think his name is Clay Clark. He read the information. He went over the documents, by the way, and showed in CERN's own writings. This eclipse stuff is very symbolic to them. You know, they said never, remember Hillary Clinton some years ago said never let a good crisis go to waste. A lot of these things with the moon, uh, certain dates, 
I learned this from reading David Icke's books some years ago, Children of the Matrix, Alice in Wonderland with the 9-11 conspiracy, the, the uh, biggest secret. Uh, those are the three books I own. He, ca he came out with some other ones and goes over some very powerful information. And David Icke actually has his own uh, channel, by the way, on Alex Jones's network, Band.Video. He has his own page on there, Keep in Mind. And he's been interviewed numerous times throughout the years. And uh, his latest stuff, go to Band.Video or Mad Max World. Dot TV and check out David Icke's work, work. That's how I learned about the child abduction, the child sacrifices uh, and things and women who were abducted into these uh, satanic pedophile rings that went all the way up to the president during Reagan's administration years ago, which I hear Bush was actually, Daddy Bush was more in control versus the other uh, Bush during that time period. I learned about, that's how I learned about who Kathy O'Brien was out of Muskegon, Michigan and Bryce Taylor. Uh, when they told their story, you can look up who they are. Uh, Bryce Taylor, look up Kathy O'Brien. Look up, uh, what's her name? She's the reason you have the modern-day Amber Alert system. Uh, Noreen Gosh, when her son Johnny Gosh came up missing years ago, she lobbied or started a foundation for mothers uh, for to help find missing, missing and exploited children. If you know the story behind that, uh, her son uh, some years ago briefly came back to her after – uh, the Stockholm Syndrome, many years later, she said he showed up in the middle of the night and, and told her what happened. She thought they, you know, didn't know what happened. He had been missing for years and explained what, what, what had happened to her. Uh, and, and Ted Gunderson, who was a former FBI agent at the time, had a private source that that was Johnny Gosh and he was under a different name. But they had already taken over him and, and were using him for their purposes. But he had enough sanity to come back and explain to his mother what what had happened when he had disappeared so many years remember years ago they should show the missing and exploited children on milk cartons by the way this stuff is not a coincidence this goes this so-called QAnon conspiracy the mainstream media will try to spin it off like that uh and, but actually you need to look up who david seaman is i can debunk the mainstream media when they always try to tell you it's a QAnon conspiracy just look at the stuff the mainstream people they reported on Look at what happened with Jerry Sandusky at Penn State. That was public. Look at the guy, Larry Nassar, who was uh, molesting the, uh, the, gym, the gymnastics girls. By the way, you guys remember that? Uh, with the USA uh, Gymnastics and Simone Biles and them testified. By the way, uh, who else? Uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Gislaine Maxwell. Look at what, uh, what's that Hollywood mogul who was locked up, Harvey Weinstein. Look what he was doing. Look who he was friends with. Look at all these people. Look at the Nexium sex cult, uh, by the way, with the actor Allison Mack who was uh, involved in that. And I saw actually a local story. They didn't do a video story, but they did a news article story, WXYZ, uh, by the way. I noticed that. So I pay attention. So you had all these different instances. Uh, look at the guy. What's the guy that used to do the subway commercials? Jared Fogle. He's locked up. You think it's a coincidence? And then now a lot of this stuff is coming out with uh with P. Diddy. I'm just saying, you guys aren't haven't been connecting the dots, but you still want to trust what the corporate mainstream media is telling you, what the corporate media is telling you. So I'm just saying you want to always stay abreast. Check out the independent media. Be abreast of all sides, of what's really going on. You need, you guys really, some of you all I'm speaking to out there really need to do your homework. If you're skeptical, you've been on the fence about this stuff, you need to really do your homework because this stuff is, has been documented for events that have taken place, that have been confirmed. Everything is not a conspiracy theory. Remember the FBI put out some type of report some years ago, they actually admitted, they said not all conspiracies are conspiracy. I said, oh, I find I read through the whole report they have to give you an out. They have to tell you some truth, despite the fact they've been compromised. You know, uh, just saying, they tell you, huh, very interesting. If you read, remember you guys, they put that out publicly some years ago when the FBI did that report, and they said some conspiracies are true, are, are factual. Hmm, interesting. So just keep in mind, once again, Jerry Sandusky. Remember who he was at Penn State? Remember, that was all in the mainstream media. They were forced to report on that when that went very public. And there was other people, other names that came out 
with coaches and stuff at other schools that one guy had died, had passed away, because I was going on for a long time. That was a massive cover-up. Then you had uh, Jeffrey Epstein once again, Gislaine Maxwell, uh, Harvey Weinstein. And there's others out there. I named the guy that used to be in the Subway commercials, uh, by the way. What's that uh, guy, that the actor in the entertainment industry, was married to that uh, young girl, uh, Wood, was it Woody Allen? Remember the sit situation from him? I even hear some people, they actually, a couple people out there, they still cover it up. They're keeping it under wraps. They're keeping it hush-hush. So it's just something to think about when they when they always, the mainstream media tries to discredit something and say, oh, that's just the QAnon conspiracy theory. Okay, if that's the case, you guys look up who David Seaman is. Look up what, uh, he used to be a writer for the Huffington Post. Look up David uh, Seaman. They'll, they'll, his Wikipedia, they'll try to say uh, the guy behind the Pizzagate conspiracy, but read his Wikipedia profile and compare that to what the mainstream media tries to say it's a QAnon conspiracy theory. So I can just debunk uh, what, what the mainstream media is lying to you about. You look up David Seaman. He's still around. I think his, look up Ful Fulcrum News is his website. It's called Fulcrum News. I don't work for him. I've never met him. But I was, uh, uh, along with other YouTubers and journalists out there that discovered during this time period, approximately around 2016, by the way, that's when that was uh, going viral. I remember uh, even Young Pharaoh had went to a protest where they were talking about this, and he even reported on it when his channel was big before he got censored by YouTube. Young Pharaoh, who's connected to the Black Conscious Movement, he used to talk about this, and his, his channel was real big, and I saw he went to different protests and networked with different people, and they shut him down. By the way, so the folks, this stuff is real. There's been a lot of people out there who've been exposing this stuff, uh, and yeah, so just keep in mind, I just wanted to kind of do a video and let you guys know where I've been, why I haven't, haven't done a video in a while. But I wanted to let you all know I'm still here. I did want to uh, plan on doing a video on my other channel. And uh, maybe the other topic I can go, uh, I'll cover or give my thoughts with the uh, P. Diddy situation. But a lot of stuff is coming out. They reported on this past November, they said it, it was going to potentially turn into a, a a criminal, uh, criminal case that not just civil because the civil you read the court docket, the allegations, and they said it would be other lawsuits followed that followed the Cassie suit, and that's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. So I don't know. Some people just are brand new, but in case you don't know, I already knew already from Paula Tisa tells. I mean, she been staying, keeping her uh, her her foot on Diddy's neck with these videos, dropping game. Uh, heavy stuff, but well, we already knew. And she basically reported on it already. There was an investigation going on uh, for a long time. And then there's documentaries, if you watch, uh, years ago, back uh, in the 90s, during that era, with the uh, beef situation was going on. So you think they didn't have their eyes on Diddy back then? And Professor Griff, who I have his book, talked about the hip-hop police or the undercover the informants that you had in the music industry. Come on now. So they had they had their eyes on Diddy for a long time. But as DJ Academics reported on, the feds, the FBI, they can watch you for a very long time before they make their move or they have enough evidence or they get enough on you and they closing in. So I say he's done. It's a wrap. It ain't no coming back from this. It's been be very interesting to see how things play out because I hear allegedly everybody who was associated with him and those freak-off parties, a lot of people, they may be interviewing or hunting down. I even heard rumors, allegedly, that Beyonce and Jay-Z were separating their assets because a lot of people were calling, saying that Jay-Z was next, by the way, and saying not so much Beyonce, but, you know, they were friends close to uh, Did he Remember, they were at that, that billionaire brunch. He came to that Rock Nation brunch back in 2020. There's still footage of that. And you had a lot of people in, the, in their circle in this camp. I hear Mary J. Blige put out a statement. And a lot of these people try to distance themselves from him. The rapper Lil Boosie saying it was pretty scary how he didn't see a lot of people speaking up on Diddy's behalf. But they were celebrating, cheering with them, you know, when they were having these different parties and brunches. But they're nowhere to be found. Some of them are quiet as a mouse. You don't hear about it, but pay attention to that.
Pay attention to these people. They'll let you know what their true colors are. Some of these people I don't like. They be uh, promoting the Democratic Party, promoting all this stuff. Uh, and look at them now. They're quiet as a mouse, silent. Will claim to be for, for women and for uh, for women for against rape and sexual harassment and stuff. But they quiet as a mouse and was hanging with Diddy, rolling with him tough. And there's a lot of women involved, famous women. Just something to think about. But they quiet as a mouse. You know, it shows you people can be two-faced. When, you, when you're on top of the world, people rolling with you, then you fall to the bottom, boom, you by yourself. Very interesting. So I'm going to get to the comments. I'm going to read the comments. I Thank you all for joining. Tony Benson Mahuka says, aloha. Thank you for joining. Chi Vegas says, peace, peace. Dorsey Chat, peace, Chi. Thank you for joining. Chi says, gratitude, brother, for keeping it 100. Yes, appreciate you all. Well, that's my time. I just wanted to let you all know I'm still here. I may do a video on my other channel, by the way, but I just wanted to let you all know I'm still here. <laughs> Covered a lot of information thus far, so stay abreast. Uh, stay tuned. Until next time, real legends never die. They live in our hearts. The marathon will continue. Peace. I'm out.